Good evening, my name is David Williamson and uh, it's a privilege for me to have the opportunity to share the message of the Gospel with you on behalf of the Christians who meet in Limavari Gospel Hall. We're going to ask for the Lord's blessing upon his word before we commence. Our Father, we are deeply grateful for thy word. We remember that it is living and powerful. We remember that it is able to make wise unto salvation and that the entrance of thy words give light. And so we pray that as we read from thy word and tell out the message of salvation, that there will be receptive hearts. We pray that there will be some willing to receive thy word as it is in truth, the word of God, and trust the Lord Jesus that is presented in thy word. We pray for blessing now in the Lord's precious name. Amen. Now I want to read to you a verse found in the book of Romans in the Bible, the book of Romans and chapter 1. Uh, it's the words of the Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16. He said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now sometimes uh, I wonder if people consider those who share the message of the gospel in this way. They say, why bother with such a message? Surely the world has plenty of problems and difficulties. Surely there are other messages which are more important in the present than this 2,000 year old message that you proclaim from the Bible. Well the Apostle Paul he said of the gospel, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He was speaking of his confidence in it. He was speaking of the fact that he loved to declare it. Now why was that the case? Why was it that Paul, the apostle, was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Well, I want to suggest four reasons why that was the case. The first reason was this, that the gospel message deals with the greatest problem human beings have. Yes, we can listen to the news, we can watch the media, and we can discover that there are tremendous problems in the world. Uh, problems of disease, problems of famine, problems of war. And yet when we come to the Bible, we discover that the greatest of all problems, in fact, the mother of all problems, is the problem of sin. And of course, the message of the gospel is intended to deal with that problem, the problem of human sin. Way back at the beginning, the Lord God formed man of the dust and breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. And at that point there were no problems, no sickness, no death, no war, no famine. And yet sin entered into the world. A deliberate choice by our first parents in the Garden of Eden brought sin into the world and opened the door for the entrance into the world of every other disaster, whether that be sickness or death or famine or war. And so right at the root, the problem of humanity is the problem of sin. And says the Apostle Paul, this message deals with it. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. The problem of sin that we have, it has destroyed the world, it destroys many lives, but ultimately the danger is this, that we will receive the punishment that is due to us for the sins that we have committed, that we will be banished from God and punished by him in hell for eternity. Thankfully, there is an answer, and the answer is the gospel, the good news about Christ. It deals with the greatest problem. Another point about the message of the gospel that Paul preached, which meant that he wasn't ashamed of it, was this. It presents the greatest person. 
as we think about the world presently and listen to the news and watch the media, we discover that there are great persons which are often in the news. For example, there are presidents, there are prime ministers. Over recent days, uh, the focus has been upon the royal family. And of course, these are great and exalted people in this world. But the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for this reason. It presents the greatest person. In fact, the person that the gospel presents is far greater than any other person in this world. He is great because of who he is. We read in Romans chapter 9 that Christ came, who is God, over all, blessed forever. Amen. The one who was God, the creator of the universe, equal with his Father in glory. He descended from heaven and he came into this world to deal with the problem of our sin. The one who was God, he became flesh. The one who lived with the Father, the Bible tells us he dwelt or he lived among us in this world. The man of Galilee, the child of Mary, the person who was crucified upon the cross, he was God with us. He's the greatest person, not only because of who he is, he's the greatest person because of what he did. He came into the world to rescue us. He came into the world to save us. He came into the world to deal with the problem of our sin. And so he went to the cross at Calvary. And Paul tells us here in Romans chapter 5 that God commends or demonstrates his own unique love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He came to deal with the greatest problem. And as the greatest person, he had the ability to do so. But it came at the tremendous price of his suffering and death and sacrifice upon the cross at Calvary. A great problem, the greatest. A great person, the greatest of all persons. Says the Apostle Paul, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for another reason. Because in this gospel there is contained the greatest power. The greatest power. You know, in recent months there has been much talk about military power. Destructive power. In fact, a short time ago, uh, there was quite a lot of talk about nuclear power and the damage that that can cause if ever uh, wars descended and became nuclear in their character. Nuclear power. And we wonder and we are concerned at the fact that human beings have such power at their disposal to wreak such havoc in the world. But you know, the Bible tells us that there is a, a far greater power, even than nuclear power. In this verse, we read about the power of God, the power of God. Now, what can the power of God achieve? Well, in this very chapter, we read that the power of God is that which brought the universe into existence out of nothing. And as we look at the things which we can see around us, they are a testimony to the eternal power of our God. His power is the only power that can bring something out of nothing. And then as well as that, we read in this chapter that it is this power which raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. He has been declared to be the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. And so this one who died upon the cross, he was raised from the dead and divine power, the power of God, raised him from the dead. That power gave life to the dead. Now, when it comes to the matter of our salvation, of our being forgiven for our sins and being ready to meet God in heaven, what the Bible is saying is this, that same power is required, the very same. See, there are some people and they think that by their own efforts, maybe by their religious activity, 
uh, by the reformation of their life in one way or another, by becoming better, by, by uh, putting a lot of strenuous effort into self-improvement, that they can in some sense save themselves. But uh, we may as well try to create something out of nothing. We may as well try to give life to the dead as to try to save ourselves. What we need is God's power and it is God who saves. The Bible tells us those who are saved, they are born not by any natural means, but by God himself. So the Apostle Paul says, I'm not ashamed of this message. It deals with the greatest problem. It presents the greatest person. It contains the greatest power. And he says more. He says, I'm not ashamed of this message because there is contained in it the greatest promise. What is the greatest promise that this verse presents to us? It says the, the Apostle, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Now listen to what it says. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Now this is a promise, and this is a promise made by a God who cannot lie. There are many promises also that have been communicated to us over recent years. And we discover later that those promises have not been kept on occasion. Sometimes those promises really were never intended to be kept and we were being deceived. And on other occasions, those promises, well, they couldn't be kept because circumstances changed and, and they weren't in the control of the person who made the promise. And, and because of that, the promise couldn't be kept. Well, thank God. God is the kind of God who always can and who always will keep his promise. When he makes a promise, he intends to keep it. And there is no circumstance that could arise which would mean that he doesn't have the power or the ability to keep that promise. Now let's think through this verse very simply, very quickly again. Says the Apostle Paul, I am not ashamed. I am delighted, I am confident in this message. Why? It's about Christ, the one who is God, who came into the world to save us, who went to the cross, who took the punishment for our sin, who rose again from the dead the third day. This message has power, divine power, the power to save us from going to hell, the power to change our lives in the present, the power to ensure that we arrive in heaven. But how does that power become a uh, relevant to our lives. How are our lives changed? Well, there is a promise made. If we are willing to believe on Christ, if we are willing to trust in the Saviour for ourselves, if we are willing to forsake trust in our own efforts or our religion or anything else, just acknowledge that we're sinners in need of God's power and turn to Christ and trust the risen Lord Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and to take us to heaven, that this promise is made to us, we will experience the power of God that will give us new life and will make us a new creation in Christ Jesus. Can I urge you this evening to come to the Saviour, to trust him and to enjoy the salvation that he offers to you. Now, thanks once again for listening to the message of the gospel this evening, and we do trust that it will be a blessing to you. Thank you.